graph signals are the objects we process with graph filters and graph neural networks. Begin with a graph G having n nodes and shift operator S. A graph signal is a vector which also has n components and in which we associate component Xi to the ith node of the graph. In the diagram, we show a graph with eight nodes supporting a graph signal with eight components. Different components of the signal are associated to different nodes of the graph, something that we represent by scaling the size of the nodes. Although a graph signal is just a vector, the shift operator is considered intrinsic to the signal. When we want to emphasize this fact, we write the signal as a pair made up of the shift operator and the signal itself. The graph is an expectation of proximity or similarity between the components of the signal X and the objective of graph signal processing is to leverage this prior information in the processing of the signal. Multiplication of a graph signal by a shift operator implements a diffusion of the signal over the graph. More formally, define a diffuse signal Y as the product of the graph shift operator with a given graph signal X. Because of the sparsity pattern of S, the ith component of the diffused signal, which we denote by Y sub I, is affected only by the components that we denote by XJ for J in the neighborhood N of I. These are the values of the input signal X that are supported on adjacent nodes J that belong to the neighborhood of I. In a normal matrix multiplication, we would sum over all J indexes, but only the weights in the neighborhood of I are non-zero in the product S times X. In the illustration, we have an input graph signal with components XI, and we highlight the input value at node 2. The result of the diffusion operation at this node is affected only by the values of the input signal XJ at the neighboring nodes that we highlight in green. The diffusion value Y2 is affected by the input value X4, but is not affected by X8, to cite a couple of examples. Notice that the converse of this influence statement dictates that the value of the input xi associated with node i affects the values of the diffuse signal yj only for the indexes j that corresponds to neighboring nodes. We have flipped the role of the input and output signal, if you wish. In the example here, the value x2 of the input signal at node 2 affects the values of the diffuse signal yj only at those nodes j that are neighbors of i, which we highlight in green. The input value x2 affects the output value y4, but it does not affect y8, to cite a couple of specific examples. Further observe that the stronger weights contribute more to the output of the diffusion. Thus, the locality of the diffusion operation manifests also on the strength of the influence that node J has on node I. This is important where graphs are not that sparse but have dominant weights. We summarize these observations by saying that diffusion is a local operation whereby signal components are mixed with signal components of neighboring nodes. This is a property that is natural to leverage in the processing of the signal X, and it also plays an important role in the use of diffusions in distributed systems. The diffusion operator can be composed with itself to produce the diffusion sequence.
we formally define this sequence through recursive multiplication by the shift operator S. Element zero of the diffusion sequence is the signal itself, and subsequent components are such that the k plus first element of the diffusion sequence is the product of S and the kth element of the diffusion sequence. To be more clear, the zeros entry of the diffusion sequence is the graph signal itself. Element one is the diffusion of element zero. This is the diffuse signal Sx, which we have just discussed. Element two of the diffusion sequence is the diffusion of element one. This is the diffusion of the diffused signal. Element three of the diffusion sequence is the diffusion of element two, the diffusion of the diffusion of the diffusion if you want to keep track. Alternatively, we can unroll the recursion and simply write the kth entry of the diffusion sequence as the kth power of the graph shift operator S applied to the input graph signal X. Entry zero of the diffusion sequence is the multiplication of the shift operator raised to the power of zero with the graph signal. This is the graph signal itself. Entry one of the diffusion sequence is the product of S raised to the power of one with X. This is the diffused signal. Entry two is obtained by pre-multiplying the signal X with the shift operator S raised to the power of two and entry three is obtained by pre-multiplying the signal X with the shift operator raised to the power of three. Some observations are in order. The diffusion sequence embeds the trade-off between local and global information. And we can see from their definitions and perhaps more clearly from the figures, the kth element of the diffusion sequence diffuses information to and from k-hop neighborhoods. Thus, for lowest values of k, the entries of the diffusion sequence represent local information only, whereas for large values of k, the entries of the diffusion sequence represent global information. This trade-off between locality and globality is a characteristic of convolutions. We know already, and we are going to see it again in the next video, that the diffusion sequence is used in the definition of graph filters. This is one reason why, not the only, but certainly one. There are two equivalent versions of the diffusion sequence, one recursive and one using powers of the shift operator S. Be warned to always use the recursive version in implementations. This warning has to be repeated. Always, I repeat, always use the recursive definition of the diffusion sequence. There are dramatic differences in computational cost. And incidentally, when we consider distributed systems, this is the only version that can be computed. The power version is the one we will use for analysis.